Hi, everyone. I'm absolutely thrilled uh, to talk a little bit now with the wonderful Shelley. She is the managing director of Red Badger in the UK, a digital transformation uh, uh, company. She's also uh, uh, a homeschooling mom at this time uh, and really juggling a peach, a table, a chair, a child, an incredible job. And she's going to share with us uh, a little bit about herself. Uh, and then our questions on challenges and achievements. So Shelley, how do you describe yourself uh, in your own words at this time? Um, yeah, so I'm the UK Managing Director of Red Badger. And we're a large digital consultancy. We're privately owned and based in London and Old Street when we're not working from home, like we have been for the last 12 months. Um, we build digital products for large scale global organizations. Um, I'm a Kiwi, so I'm from New Zealand, where I lived until I was about 25 and moved to London in 2004 um, and am constantly conflicted about my identity. <laughs> uh, but I love both um, England and New Zealand, both amazing opportunities to sort of um, have lived and enjoyed both countries. Um, I spent the majority of my career in large corporates um, and moved kind of to Red Badger, the consulting side, five years ago, which was a very new experience for me um, and has been absolutely amazing and very human and team focused in a way that I didn't think consulting would be. Um, and I love bringing teams together and solving business problems with digital solutions. I've got two small children. So Harriet, as you said, I am endure, enduring homeschool um, and very much looking forward to March the 8th. Well, March the 8th, and you can return to at least doing 150 things a day, not a thousand things a day. I think all of us, our hearts and our praise go out to uh, those who've been homeschooling as well as doing their extraordinary jobs uh, uh, in light of the International Women's Day focus mm. on challenge. Uh, 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 for you to talk a little bit about some of the challenges you've had and how you have addressed them so that others who are looking to you for inspiration and role modeling can kind of learn about some of what you've experienced and what you have done about it. So, for a long time in my career, I felt a very strong sense and need to seek validation from others. So I felt the constant need to check in with others on quite a superficial level, really, about what they thought of me and the work I was doing. And I was looking for quite shallow praise, that quick kind of, was that meeting okay? Were you happy with how I positioned that? Was that document good enough, for example, um, rather than understanding what I thought good quality was and trying to measure myself against my own standards. So I would focus on what others thought and I would seek their validation rather than anchoring my own worth in my view of how I was doing and then giving myself that self acknowledgement. Um, and also because I needed this validation, I foolishly thought others needed it from me. <laughs> so I was constantly giving this validation reassurance to others, you know, in the same way that I was expecting it. So quick bits of feedback constantly, um, which often people didn't need and they found it confusing or they thought it was out of context or just, you know, a bit overwhelming. <laughs> Um, so I realized I had to set my own standards of what success and good looked like for me so I could remove that need for constant validation from others. Um, I had to realize that my opinion matters the most to myself um, and it matters more than what other people's opinion of my work or of me is. Um, and with that, I had to grow that inner self-confidence and learn how to give myself that reassurance so I could, I could gather it independently. Um, I think a turning point for me came when 
one of my best friends who was a, an amazing international woman, um, one of those real cheerleaders um, who really, you know, lift you up and campaign for you um, and believe in you and provided me with a lot of that validation in my life and my career. She very sadly passed away. Um, she had been a best friend and a colleague for 16 years, and she was my go-to person for those pep talks. So in confronting my grief, um, I realized I didn't want anyone to replace her. I didn't want anyone else to be my sort of go-to person because she was irreplaceable. And I realized I had to address this part of myself that was quite challenging and also quite um, empty at that stage. Um, so I really decided to put the work in and think about how I can try and overcome this on my own. Shelley, thank you so much for sharing that so openly. It's always, you know, heartfelt to hear of, you know, grief in that way. And I think that will resonate with so many people. And, and we'll want to know, so how did you overcome that and fill your friends almost uh, unfillable void in a sense. Yeah, I mean, I think I had to really consciously create a plan and I decided the only person that could provide that acknowledgement was me. And actually I was exhausted by grief and by seeking it out elsewhere. So I actually did about three or four different things which may be quite helpful. Um, I, the first thing I did was I tried to better understand it. And I spoke to lots of other people to understand how they, if that was something they needed to overcome. And I was quite surprised that a lot of people didn't have this. I thought everyone had it. <laughs> um, so I spoke to people, some who had quite a low self-belief and others who were very, very confident. And actually what they all said to me was the same thing. They said to feel really proud that you've done your best work. You need to make sure you're prepared and put the time in to preparing and being happy with the quality of what you're doing and what you're creating and what you're sharing. And for me, that was, that was my biggest challenge because I fly from meeting to meeting to meeting from London to home to the office. Um, and I'm thinking on my feet a lot in highly pressurized situations. And that is exhausting, particularly when you're then thinking, how am I doing? <laughs> um, so I really carved out the time to um, put boundaries in place and protect that time so that I could better prepare and feel pleased with the work I was doing, which isn't to say it's always popular, <laughs> but I felt that I was better prepared and engaged and happier with the quality of what I was producing. Um, I also opened myself up to much more thoughtful and constructive feedback. So rather than that very fast, very shallow feedback that I was seeking earlier, I would look for themes and try and understand how I was perceived or how I was performing on a more meaningful level. Um, and then I think just as I got older and realized I've been in lots of worst case scenarios, and I've not been fired or, you know, I've survived. Um, I found a confidence and a, and a peace with that and really realized in times of crisis or in times of planning, I could better think about the problem and spend my energy on that than continuing to kind of question, how am I doing? Fantastic. That's so, um, I think, so helpful. And this theme of boundaries very interesting. It's come up a number of times in very different women in different circumstances. So thank you uh, uh, for sharing that. And you, you touched a little on this, but we'd love to hear what is perhaps the hardest thing for women to talk about, which is their amazing achievements. So what are you most proud of? What do you think when you look in the mirror? Yes, <laughs> this is what <laughs> I do, and this is what I've done. Um, well, I think I'm probably gonna say what every woman you're speaking to if they're a parent is going to say, but you know, lockdown version one and version three 
have both required my London house to turn into a homeschool. Um, and my husband and I both work. And that has been intense on many, many levels, particularly if you live in London and space is a premium. Um, we've got every corner of the house being a school or a, a, a kitchen or an office or all of the above. Um, so I think on, you know, on March the 8th, I'm March the 8th, I will be celebrating the joy of having my children back in the classroom with their teachers and friends and celebrating the fact that we have survived it as a family. Um, and it's been incredibly tough, but we've come out of it and we're, you know, we're looking forward. And, um, and I think that is the biggest cause of celebration. Yes. Yeah. I think that's so authentic. And I think, um, I think it'll take a little time for all of us to deal with our own demons of lockdown one, mm. two and three. Um, not <laughs> least if we'd realized there were three to come, we might have, we might have all done things rather differently in, in one and two. But I think what you have shared, Shelley, will be an inspiration for many, uh, particularly as people are seeking out, you know, the skills that you have, you know, digital transformation skills, consultancy skills, the skills of now knowing you can teach toddlers whilst helping to transform uh, the UK's biggest corporates is absolutely phenomenal. So 